And we certainly honor the spirit of the Lord on today for blessing us to come yet again to hear what thus saith the Lord in his word on today. We just give him praise. We give him glory. We give him honor because he is worthy to be praised, worthy to be praised, worthy of all the glory that we can give him, worthy of all the honor. Uh, someone once said, if I had 10,000 tongues, that wouldn't be enough. If I had 10,000 hands, they couldn't praise him enough. So we just thank God. We praise him. We worship him on today. We lift him up on today because he is our all in our all. So we just thank God and we just ask that a spirit of praise begin to come in the various areas where you are. Sometimes we fail to give God praise. Sometimes we fail to give him the glory that he rightly deserves. Even in the midst of what we're going through, even in the struggles, the trials, the heartaches, the pain, the loss, the loved ones. We still give God praise. We still give God glory. And on today, God just saying he just wants a little bit of praise. He just wants a little bit of, our, of the glory that he deserves. Glory because he's kept you in spite of all that you went through, in spite of all the snares and, and traps and things that the enemy tried to do to you. God was still there. He was still blessing you. And God told you that you were not alone, that, that he was with you every step of the way. I'm so grateful on today of his blessings. I'm so grateful on today of what God is doing in my life. Yes, the things that I desire for myself, you know, uh, God is beginning to reveal and God is beginning to work them out and do those things that I've asked him to do. And all we have to do is have patience and understanding, knowing first that God is God and God will do things in his time and at his will. So we just thank God on today. I'm excited about the word of God. I'm excited about what God is doing uh, for his people. And I'm just excited to, to understand that times are changing. Things are, are changing. And, and God is in the midst of, of that change. And, and before we get into the message, I just thank God because... If the Lord say the same, uh, this goes out to uh, the members and those ones. If the Lord say the same, uh, come July 1st, we should be uh, going back into uh, our, our church, going back into uh, our place that uh, we call uh, our place of uh, worship. We're going to go back into there on July, uh, the first Sunday in July, if the Lord say the same. But I like to be led and moved by God, so I'm still listening and, and hearing uh, God's voice. But July 1st, we should be back amen into our church now we're going to continue with this same format in this same setting uh bringing forth the word exactly at 10 and giving uh god his praise and, and his glory in his word so so we're going to continue with the same format for those of you who are going to continue to follow and watch uh the message uh each sunday but i, I just wanted to get that out before we get into the word on today and, and god is just so good God is just so good that he has kept us uh, in the midst of what we went through, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this situation. God is still awesome. So as we look into God's word on today, and, and I, I begin to uh, think about uh, this word, uh, actually, and I, I have to be truthful this morning. Uh, of course, we, we try to get things together along the week, and we study the word and, and all those things, but... But God sometimes drops things into your spirit, you know, the, the Sunday of or the day of before you're about to speak. And he gave me this uh, little, little quick little message uh, found in, in 2 Kings. I started off in uh, dealing with David and, and how David uh, got to a point and moment in his life that he uh, felt as though that uh, he was going through so many things that he began to reminisce or remember how God was with him through uh, every step of the way or every journey that he went through. And then I started thinking and God placed on my heart, you know, the title of this message. He said, you're more than meets the eye. And I started thinking about that. Uh, he said, more than meets the eye. Uh, is, is the title of the message and, and when you look at 2nd Kings we're going to be talking about Elisha though uh, but we're going to grab David's story and, and, and bring it into perspective as well but when God gave me more than meets the eye I started thinking about that and I started uh, wondering you know where uh, God was really showing me and going with this message and our foundation scriptures is going to be in 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. And we're going to probably start at the 15th verse and maybe read down to the 19th verse, if the Lord say the same. But when God 
begin to reveal to me that I, of course, did when he said more than meets the eye. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, uh, and, and, and me being, you know, uh, a kid at heart, if you will, or just like in sci-fi. And, and I started thinking about the Transformers and, and how that they are, are more than meets the eye as part of their slogan or, or, or uh, what they talk about. Uh, how they, they can become a car and then a robot or whatever. I, I, of course, my mind went there, but, but that's not where we're going in, in God's word on today. When, when God gave me more than meets the eye, I, I researched it and, and meets the eye is a, a phrase or an idiom, if you will, that, that was uh, given uh, back in the 1800s. And it, and it gave an a impression that there was something else or, or something behind the scenes. So when you look at more than meets the eye, it's, it's sort of revealing to us that there is something more that you're not seeing. Oh, somebody going to get this in a minute. It, it's something more that you're not seeing. So so when you see uh, folks and you see them, you, you see uh, the outward shell. You don't understand the totality of what God has placed in us and we become so much more. So when God dropped that into my spirit, I started getting excited because I understood what God was, was trying to show me uh, here in his, in his word. And then he led me to 2 Kings, the sixth chapter. Now, this, this uh, Second Kings uh, here, it, it reveals a, a moment in time when uh, Elisha was, was on the scene. And, and I'm going to uh, bring us up to speed on, on just what uh, this chapter is about, just briefly. So you'll understand when we get to our foundation scriptures that you will know just why, uh, where this uh, came into play. But again, this, this, this idiom that, that we use, more than meets the eye, it's... it's Sort of saying this is it's so much easier to misjudge something or somebody. It, it's so uh, easy to 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 not see that thing for really what it truly is, and, and just keep that in mind. And and if you start to think about or your mind starts drifting a, a bit, you you have to understand that when people saw you as. Uh, uh, that lowly person or that one that uh, didn't have or, or or seeming like they didn't have they, they they wasn't looking at you and they really didn't understand that God had so much more beyond uh, what our natural eyesight can see but but let's let, let's get into this word real quick and and I promise you we, we're, we're going to be uh, quick on today but here in uh, 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 second Kings uh, we're going to find that uh, Elisha, a uh, story brings about, uh, let me get to it. <clears throat> Elisha's story uh, brings about a, a moment in time where uh, Elisha was the prophet of God. And he, if you read, and, and I often say read the entire chapter, but when you start at, at the, the first verse, you understand that Elisha was a prophet of God. And there came a moment in time where he then tells the children of Israel, look, uh, it, it's now time for us to go to uh, Jordan, uh, around the Jordan uh, region, and cut down some trees and so forth and so on uh, to, to build a, a bigger uh, a territory or, or fencing or whatever you will have it. But he begins to tell them that, and then he tells them to go and start cutting. While one is down there cutting, and this is where we get the story where God defines uh, gravity and he makes the axe head rise, the story goes on and tells us that they are chopping down uh, wood and the axe head falls into the River Jordan. Now we have to understand the River Jordan is, is dark, it's is milky, it's, it's, it's like you can't really see it, it's brown water. And uh, the axe head falls down there and they went and go get Elisha and they tell the man of God, they said, look, the axe head fell here, it was borrowed, this is not mine, it's borrowed, and uh, they wanted to return it. So Elisha then go cuts down a stick, put the stick in the water where the axe head was and it floats to the top. Oh, it's powerful right there by itself. How how God can take what, what we perceive as natural and turn it into the supernatural and make that axe metal float in what is water. So he retrieved the axe head and then as the story goes on, the Bible said that Elisha was was privy to the information of the Assyrians. They, they told him that uh, uh, through the, the leading of God told him that they were going to ambush the children of Israel. 
God's people. Now you, you got to understand that, that they was going to ambush God's people. And as soon as they came into their camp region, that they was going to slay them and take them captivity uh, into captivity. So Elisha then goes, tells the king of Israel, and he tells them, look, don't go by this way. When he does that, the king of Assyria, and you can find it in verse 6, 7, or 8, around those uh, chapter, uh, verses, he then tells them, uh, the king of Assyria then says to his servant, go and search out, spy the land where uh, Elisha is, and he said, and tell me where you find him. The story tells us that they found him in Dorthan. And when he finds him, he says, now I'm going to send some chariots, some horses, uh, and, and a, a host of men to surround the camp of Israel, surround the camp of Elisha, rather. And uh, when uh, morning day come, they're going to attack Elisha and destroy him. So we pick it up here and we understand in uh, God's word uh, what is going to take place. Let me just jump to verse 15 in 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, verse uh, uh, 6th chapter, verse 15. It says, when the servant of the man of God was risen early and going forth, behold, a host camped about, a, uh, a host compassed the city both with horses, chariots, and his servant said unto him, alas, master, how shall we do? So here we understand that, that the king has sent this army, this host, to surround uh, uh, Elisha. And we find that the servant wakes up and he looks out and he sees this host of the army all around them. And then he, then he goes to Elisha and he begins to uh, ask him, well, how shall we survive this? In other words, how shall we come out uh, of this situation? He, he sees all this army around them and he's saying, how can we fare in this uh, situation? But then Elisha, look at this here. And he answered and said, fear not, for they that, have been, uh, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. So Elisha is now trying to get him to understand, look, we're, we're more than meets the eye at this time. What you see is the naturalness of what's going on, the situation. And that's just like us. Sometimes uh, God, uh, we, we, we focus too much on the natural part of the situation. And God is trying to open up our eyes to see the bigger picture, as they say. And God is trying to get you to understand that there's a bigger picture behind what you're going through. What I'm going through, whether it's pain in your body, what I'm going through is to show me the bigger picture that God is still yet a healer and that God will heal and bless and move by his spirit and touch and, and do what needs to be done. But here in this story, we find that Elisha is trying to get his servant to understand something. He's trying to get his servant to understand, look, we are more than meet the eye at this moment and the servant needed that encouragement. Come on, we all need encouragement sometimes. Somebody have told you and, and put placed in your spirit and, and try to put in your spirit that you was worthless, that you wasn't nothing, that that that, that you you're you're you are an outcast or, or whatever uh, their situation may be. But when you really understand and somebody encourage you and tell you, no, baby, you are more than what meets the eye. You are more than what they told you you was gonna be. You was more than what they said that you was gonna be like your mama or your daddy that that's out there doing all kinds of devilish stuff. You are more than meets the eye. When when somebody imparts into your spirit and into you and let you know that. God has something greater birthed in you and all you have to do is walk in your greatness and understand what God is doing and understand that look you may see this outward man but my inward man that God said was so much stronger than this outward I, mm, I can begin to move mountains I can begin to speak to things and, and tell them to go when you are more than meets the eye people can't understand it I see a little frail body I see a little person or uh, or I see this person or that person, but why are they able and, and, and able to accomplish greater things? Why are they able to do this and do that? Because we are more than meets the eye. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. So, so guess what? Just because they see you and just because they perceive your yesterday's sins and those things that you used to do, and God has transformed.
formed you. God has picked you up. God has washed you. God has blessed you. God has placed his blood all over you. And now you're walking in newness. The Bible said we are transformed. Formed. We are now something new. So I am now more than meets the eye. When you see that little caterpillar, you see him now crawling on his belly. But you don't know that he is more than meets the eye. Because after a while, he goes to a point of hibernation. He goes to a point of metamorphosis where he then forms a cocoon. And that cocoon for us is God's Holy Spirit wrapped all around us and is incubating us, is strengthening us. When the word of God comes into us and begins to change something in us and we begin to metamorphosize into who God said we are because they saw this flesh of sin but God said I see something so much more you are more than meets the oh glory I don't want to get excited yet but you are more than meets the eye on today but as the story goes on and it tells us that Elisha then prays and says to the Lord I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see the Lord opened his eyes. And the young man, look at this, he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots. Guess what? A fire round about Elisha. These horses and, and chariots that was around about Elisha. These horses and chariots that he couldn't see because he was standing up in the flesh, his servant. But thanks be to God that we understand that, that when Elisha said to God, look, let me pray on this thing. Let me ask God to open up your eyes because you see the limitless, uh, the, uh, your, li your limitations. Uh, but what you don't understand, uh, that we serve a God without limits. Uh, we serve a God that David said, I, I know him to be all-knowing. Uh, I know him to be all-powerful. I know him to mm, glory, to be all-seeing. Uh, I know him to be omnipotent everywhere at all times. Uh, and we have to understand uh, that when Elisha was praying unto God, uh, when he was telling God about this thing, uh, he said, God, I need you to open his eyes right now so he can see the hidden potential that's around him. Oh, here we go. You need to ask God to open your eyes. God, reveal unto me my hidden potential that these other ones are trying to act like they haven't noticed of me. These other ones are trying to, to say it's not in me. But God, open up my eyes. Somebody once said, God, help my unbelief. But no, no, God, we ask you because I believe that you can do what you say you can do. Just like Elisha prayed, God, I'm asking you right now. Now open up my eyes so I can see uh, the things that you have for me in my life. So what he did was he prayed. He prayed to God and he said, God, open up this young man's eyes. Allow him to see what I see in the spirit. And God opened up the eyes of that young man, the Bible said. And the Bible said that there was a host. Mm, glory. It was horses, chariots, a fire all around them and in the mountain. So Elisha was trying to tell him, see, you didn't understand what you had. You didn't understand that we had so much more with us than what you see. Yes, we're up here. Yes, it's, uh, they're surrounding us, uh, but we're not alone at this moment. As I said before, David got to a point in Psalms 139, he got to a point where he started thinking about uh, how God could search him and, and how God could uh, uh, see uh, his inward uh, thinkings and thoughts and stuff. And David thought that he was alone at that time, but he then got an epiphany or an awakening or, or God revealed to him in Revelation uh, a knowledge that, that David, you are not alone. In the Psalms 39, God tells David, well, David put pen to parchment, and he says this. He said, God, if I make my bed in hell or if I sin to hell, you're there. He said, if I go to the highest mountains, you're there. The deepest valleys, you're there. He said, no matter where I go, God, I understand that I'm not alone. I can't flee from your presence. So what that was telling me is God is everywhere and all-powerful and all-knowing. And David understood because at the end of it, David said, look, we are I'm, I'm wonderfully and marvelously made. 
We're wonderfully and marvelously made. So, so what David said, look, I'm more than meets the eye. You might see me, and that's how Goliath seen him. And a little ruddy little uh, boy that came to, to fight up against him. All he seen was a little child, uh, a, a little lad that was coming to fight him. But David was coming with the power and the, the presence of the mighty God with him. And when David stood before Goliath, uh, see, I'm trying to give you a little testimony of David's story. Because sometimes we think we got to be this great person uh, and for God to move mightily. But no, no, God said, you're more than meets the eye. So guess what? I'm going to use you. Uh, in your state and where you are right now to do some mighty and powerful things. Uh, but David steps up to Goliath uh, and David looks this giant in the face uh, and David says, who is this blaspheming our God? Goliath looks at David and says, why did y'all send this little child out here to try to fight against me? He's a little rugged, little uh, raggedy little boy. I can destroy him sure enough. But see, he didn't understand Goliath, didn't understand what God was, what David was packing was God's spirit and God's might and God's power. Let me tell you something. You have that same uh, spirit, power, and might uh, that David had uh, and that faith in God, understanding that at any given time, uh, God will allow me to reach down in the brook uh, and grab five smooth stones. Uh, I don't need but one, uh, but... Mm. But God gives me five uh, to let me know uh, that if anything else come my way, uh, I'm already prepared to take them out as well. Mm, glory to his name. Uh, so many of y'all focused on that one giant, uh, but the Bible said there was more giants uh, that came after that. Uh, so David was prepared uh, to take those next giants of Gath out. He was ready to fight because he had the equipment ready. But oh, we were more than me, T.I. Goliath didn't realize who David was. He didn't realize what God was doing in David. And when he came up to him, he, he had a perception that this was nothing. But when David smote him in the forehead and killed him, then everybody around him seen what God had done. And they fled and got fearful. And David was able to pursue and destroy all the enemies of Israel. So come on here. You better get this thing and understand something. When God is blessing you and when God is powering you and giving you strength, you don't have to, when you look in the mirror, you may see just yourself. But when God begins to magnify you and when God begins to bless you, and I got to go back to that caterpillar, when God begins to surround you and put you in your cocoon place, put you in that place where he's fixing, where he's training, transforming you uh, where he's bringing you out uh, and where he's changing you into something more than what you once was uh, oh glory to his name somebody better get this thing uh, and when that caterpillar is ready uh, when that butterfly has now transformed uh, that caterpillar into a butterfly uh, it begins to break loose uh, the cocoon around him begins to open up uh, and what that's letting me know uh, is after God surrounds you uh, and after the word of God is setting in uh, God will then strengthen in you uh, and then God will open up uh, and let you come out uh, so he can test you in your faith uh, and in your strength uh, and then also to reveal to you uh, that there was a change that happened oh glory to his name somebody better scream out change uh, there was a change that happened in you uh, you now became that thing uh, in which they tried to tell you you wasn't uh, they told you you was loser uh, they told you that you was this that the other but thank you God uh, they that the God transformed me, that God changed me, and now I am a winner. Oh God, now I'm not the tail anymore, but I'm the head of this thing. Oh, glory to his name. So you are more than meets the eye on today. Somebody better scream out of more than meets the eye. Mm, more than meets the eye. The devil thought that he could take you, and he thought that he could take him, abuse your character. He thought that he could take it and try to destroy you, try to uh, touch your mind and get you thinking uh, uh, one way. But thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for touching my mind and letting me know who I am in you, letting me know that I have power that I have might. The Bible lets us know that we are more than conquerors. David said, we are more than conquerors through grace that strengthen us. We, we have to understand that when somebody see you, they may see just the flesh. But God said there's so much more there. And, and then God said, I'm going to reveal it to them. I'm going to show them who they is. But as that story goes on with Elisha real quick, Elisha's uh, praise and God opens up their eyes. Open up the eyes of the one around them. 
the servant and he lets the servant see all these chariots. But then the story goes on and says this. The Bible said that Elisha then prays again. And he says to God, he said, Lord, now I ask for you to blind the eyes of those ones that come up against us. Mm, 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 mm. Blind their eyes so, so they can't see. Blind their eyes so they don't understand what's going on. When God uh, blinded their eyes, the Bible said, Elisha then goes down to their camp uh, and said, I understand that you're searching out and looking for this or that person or, or the Israelites or wherever. He said, you know what? Follow me. Mm, glory to his name. Uh, follow me and I'm going to take you to a place. Uh, I'm going to show you where they are. And what Elisha did was led them to the camp in the Samaria where, where they was then surrounded and destroyed. Oh, get this thing here. So what I'm telling you is, you are more than meets the eye that when those ones who called you uh, all kinds of names, those ones who, who tried to uh, put you down, those ones who tried to destroy your characters, those ones who tried to uh, tell you that you had no self-worth, uh, when God begins to work in you, uh, when God begins to move in you, and you begin to pray about that thing to God. See, prayer is the key, trust me. When you begin to pray to God about it and say, God, I want you to show them just who I am in you. God, now I need for you to blind their eyes so they can't see and understand, God, just how you have blessed me and how you brought me out. Oh, glory to his name. But here we find that, that Elisha, he prays to God to blind their eyes. They, their eyes are blinded. Then as they get surrounded, he says, now open up their eyes. Oh my God. When they open up their eyes, they were surrounded by the army of Israel. They were surrounded and, and, and there was no fighting going on. They was about to put them to death, the Israelites. And, and Elisha said, no, don't, don't cause them no hurt or harm. Don't, don't harm them. Just, you, you, they're your captains. Uh, feed them. Uh, keep them. Uh, however you treat captives. Uh, and, and go about your business. But see, they didn't understand that we serve a mighty God. They didn't understand that, that, that God was on their side. And, and every so often that, that people try to convince you that, that you're something that you're not. You ought to understand uh, and have within yourself uh, and, and muster up within yourself that any given moment, I'm more than what meets the eye. I'm more than what you told me I should be. I'm, I'm more than what you tried to place in me. I'm more than what uh, the, the world said that I could become. And the thing about it, just because I don't brag uh, or show off what God has blessed me with, doesn't mean God ain't blessing me. It doesn't mean that I don't have more than what you perceive I have. See, the thing about it, uh, a rich man once said, uh, I walk into a room and, and I don't have to have on a, a, a high-powered clothes and, and all that because you don't understand what's in my pocket. You don't understand uh, the wealth that I have. And sometimes people, ju excuse me, judge you on what they see on the outside. But trust and believe. Uh, we serve a God that said, I ain't worried about the outside. Uh, I'm worried about the inside. And the inside is so much stronger and better than the outside. Uh, and the inside can control what the outside does. Mm, glory to his name. Let me finish this thing here. But God is, they're, they're trying to tell you, uh, these people, uh, and God is trying to reassure you that you are not a loser. That you're a winner in Jesus Christ. Uh, they're trying to tell you uh, and trying to uh, uh, flaunt uh, to you what they have. Uh, but they're not understanding that you're sitting on riches. Uh, they're not understanding that you're blessed beyond blessed. Uh, they're not understanding that, that you serve a mighty God that, that said all things belong to me. Even the, 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 the riches of the unrighteous is laid up for you. So, so they're not understanding. But, but, but we understand now in God's word. And I'm trying to encourage you today before I close this thing. That you are more than meets the eye. Don't let somebody keep telling you that you're nothing. Don't let somebody keep telling you that you're worthless. Don't let somebody keep telling you that you can't be something. Don't let somebody keep telling you that you can't have something. All you have to do is have faith and trust in God uh, and walk into your purpose and destiny and understand that it's God that is on your side. God that is moving you forward and it's God that said, uh, I see so much greater in you uh, than they see and all you have to do is walk 
walking to your purpose. Oh, glory to his name. Somebody better scream out, I'm walking into my purpose. God has blessed us. God has made us more than what we are. So you need to again begin to tell your atmosphere right now. I am more than what meets the eye. I'm more than what you perceive me to be. I'm more than what you're trying to claim that I can be. Because God is on my side. And God will bring me out each and every time. And God will move by his spirit. And God will allow me to accomplish some great things. So no matter where you at, if the enemy is trying to keep you in isolation, you need to tell that enemy right now, I'm coming out of my cocoon. You should have killed me while I was yet in there, but I'm coming out my cocoon. I'm now more than meets the eye. I'm something different now. I'm better than what I once was. Yes, I was crawling on my belly, but now I can fly and soar. I can soar to higher heights. I can soar to deep for debts. Come on, you're more than what they tell you you are. Oh, glory to his name. You need to encourage yourself today. Talk to that person next to you and tell them you may thought I was still in my cocoon. You may thought I was yet a lonely worm, but you didn't understand that a metamorphosis was coming. And now I'm busting out as a butterfly. So much beautiful and graceful. I can fly higher than where my problems once were. Where my problems once were. Because on the ground I could be stomped on. On the ground I could be eaten up. But when I take flight, oh glory to his name, I got the clothes. When I take flight and fly, you now see my moreness. You now see who I am now. I am so much better. I am so much beautiful. Oh glory. In the, mm, I got the clothes. Let me close. Let me close. <coughs> mm, glory to his name. I get excited, y'all. I'm sorry. But I got to close this thing because we have other things to do. But I just thank God on today. And please be encouraged. Please be encouraged. <laughs> that don't, don't allow to and don't accept the limitations that people put on you. You are more than meets the eye. You are so much more powerful. You are so much more anointed. You are so much more uh, uh, graceful than what they try to tell you you are. You have power that's already working in you. So trust and believe. Walk in it today. Lift your head high. Keep your, keep your chest out and your head high. Understanding that you're more than meets the eye. When the enemy sees you, he understands that you're a child of God. When Jesus came on the coast, I'm trying to close this thing. When Jesus came on the coast, the enemy recognized who Jesus was. When that damsel was possessed with devils, she recognized who Paul and Silas was. She kept thorning and bothering them. Oh, glory to his name. See, when, you, when God is, is working in you and around you, and God has brought you out of that cocoon, and you're now fluttering like a, a beautiful butterfly, you are now more than meets the eye. And they recognize that, the enemy. That's why he tried to destroy you before you got to that stage stage. Mm, I can't get back into this message, but just, just ponder on that for a moment. That's why the enemy tried to bring you so much hell. That's why the enemy tried to bring you so much pain, so much heartache, and, and so much strife, and misery, and depression, and, and all those things. And he tries to place in your head, I'm not going to go through this message again, but I feel led to say this. The enemy tries to put depression into your mind and into your spirit to try to tell you that you're nothing, to try to tell you that nobody cares, and, and nobody loves you, and, and, and nobody's with you. And, and all those things but thank you Jesus uh, I believe what Paul said and then what David said uh, that God is there all the time uh, and God is around me and I'm never alone in God uh, so we need to understand that you are more than meets the eye so because you're more than meets the eye uh, you have strength to stand on your own two feet uh, and declare in your own atmosphere in your own spirit right now uh, and say devil I don't care what you try to do uh, I don't care what you try to say to me uh, I am more than meets the eye uh, you tried to destroy me and you should have done it but thank you Jesus for blessing and keeping me thank you Jesus for moving in my life thank you Jesus for revealing to me so I can see just who I am and what I have in you oh come on let us pray let us pray father God in the name of Jesus Lord we ask that you move by your spirit on today God we ask that you bless your people God, we ask that this word was an encouraging word on today. This word was a word, dear God, that they would reveal and understand who they are, God. That they know, God, that you are with them. That they know, God, that they're not alone. That, Lord, that you will show to them 
when the enemy tries to destroy them, when the enemy tries to uh, bring uh, them into a, a state of depression, God, Lord, that you are right there with us, that you are right there helping us, leading and guiding us, God. But God, you said that you have given us strength. You said the strength that's already working in us, God. So God, we understand we have the strength. We understand that we can make it, God. Lord, now we ask that you reveal unto us, God. Open up our eyes, God, on today. That when we see ourselves, we see ourselves greater than what we are. Lord, you told us we was peculiar people. You told us we was marvelously and wonderfully made in your image. So God, allow us to see that on today. Allow us to understand who we are. God, and give us the authority and the might, God, to stand through the test of time. The things that come up against us. Whether they try to break us down, God. Lord, we ask that you build us up where we're weak. Lord, for we understand in our weakness, you said you make us strong. So God, keep us and strengthen us. In your mighty name, we pray, God. Lord, but before I seal this, I declare and I decree right now. Over each and every spirit of depression right now. God, I ask that you bind it right now in the name of Jesus. Go in there and touch that young child, God. Go in there and touch that young woman, that young lady, God. Begin to move by your spirit right now, God. Begin to whisper in their ears, God. You, The Bible said you whispered into the ears of your people. And you told them, that God, that they're not alone. So, God, we ask that you do it on today. Speak in that still small voice, God. Lord, but that small voice has mighty power. God, and we just ask that you do it on today. Seal them in your loving arms, God, in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we ask that you touch the bereaved families. Each and every one have lost a loved one, God. Lord, we ask that you bless them right now. Keep them there, God. Comfort them, God. You said, God, that you would send us a comforter. God, comfort us on today in the name of Jesus. Lord, it's your will that it was done. God, help us to accept it right now. In the name of Jesus, God, let us not doubt you or who you are. God, but trust and believe that it's according to your will. Lord, and we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Let all God's people say, amen, 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 amen. As we close again, I just thank God. And remember that if the Lord say the same, we will be back into uh, the house of the Lord on the first Sunday of July, amen, but we're keeping the same format, amen, just bringing forth the word of God until God see fits otherwise, man. Come on, look at somebody and tell them you love them. Come on, mean it in your heart. God bless you.